we're, we're going to talk a lot about the market sentiment, but I also want to talk about um, this uh, this element of satisfaction in a trading. And I'm hoping this clicks with a lot of people. I and I know I've been doing a lot of uh, kind of psychological stuff lately, like some psych stuff, some you know. Me- metaphorical stuff like golden rules and shit to have. I do have some technical stuff. I haven't done technicals in a little bit on this webinar series. Like, I don't even know what the last one um, that I did uh, was on. I don't know know what my last uh, technical webinar was. It was probably, oh, architecture of a move part three. I was in late October. Um, managing positions too. I talked about it a little bit in December. Yeah, but I do have some. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I do have some technical stuff coming up. I'm I'm honestly just waiting on the market to get a little bit fucking better before I start talking about technical analysis because I feel like it's unfair to talk about technical analysis when only one half of the technical analysis works right now. So I'm waiting a little bit. You know, like. You know, like I, I know, like in some of the technical stuff I'll be talking about, I'll be like, oh yeah. And so you have to worry because when these break, I mean, as a short, you really got to cut here because blank. But t- it, today, it really doesn't make sense. As a short, you really don't have to cover shit. <laughs> so um, yeah, uh, waiting for the market to even out a little bit, and then I'll start doing some technical stuff. Uh, yeah, that kind of satisfaction. No, just overall trader satisfaction and and, and kind of how to deal with it. All right, but first let's talk about the market sentiment here. All right, here we go. Yeah, so market sentiment, we'll, we'll go over the movers, then we'll talk about satisfaction um, and Q&A. All right, so really th- there's not a whole lot of bullishness to this market at all. I mean, and even, I mean, today just, today feels like, like as far as the spy is concerned, today feels like the culmination of fucking all of this shit. Um, and I'll talk about that a little bit on the next slide. But really the only bulls that we had kind of all week, I mean, I'm not even going to count DWAC uh, because DWAC's not exactly a small cap anymore or like a mid cap. It's kind of like its own kind of, it's, it's one of those, it's in its own space. It's not, it doesn't even really belong with like regular stocks. So I kind of excluded uh, DWAC, but it would be a bull, I guess, but it's kind of on, in its own sphere. It would, it's kind of like AMC, like you wouldn't count AMC really, you know, if AMC tanked, it's not bearish. And if AMC ripped, it's not really bullish. It's just kind of doing its own shit. Yeah. It's kind of like, you know, the meme, meme stocks. Um, but anyway, regular stocks, I mean, Sophie laser and BBIG were, you know, were kind of like the bulls of the week. They, they were the stocks that, 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 that actually, you know, showed some upper range a little bit, which has been really hard to find in this market. Other than that, everything else was a bear. But there's, you know, I was actually going through the list of stocks. There really wasn't a whole lot. This is this has kind of been a really slow week, really slow couple of weeks, um, and that's because people. I feel like there's a lot of disappointment in this. In this, like January is supposed to be banging. January is really supposed to be banging, and I'm not talking about small caps. Small caps too, but even in large caps, like it's supposed to be January effect up, 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 right? And so today kind of feels like the culmination of that, right? Well, you know, like you kind of get this, just this this uh, disappointment all happening at once, all happen at once. When everyone gets disappointed at once, people are, you know, people are more, uh, how do I want to say, they're more apt to sell in potential fear, which then leads to fear and, and all that kind of self-fulfilling crap. And so, you know, and this is what I was talking about. This was two weeks ago, right? You know, it seemed like, uh, the, the New Year's Eve, we were all pre-pricing this January effect, right? That's what this was all about. We were pre-pricing the January effect, but we didn't get the desired follow through. And, you know, some kind of people freaked out. And I said something definitely needed to change with the confidence before the markets, you know, before the market, um, uh, change of the market before people started to buy stocks again, right? It still, you know, felt like people weren't ready to start building a new bubble after the 2020 bubble burst. So it's going to be really important to, you know, to look at like the market leaders to see if, you know, we bounce and to see if, you know, we, you know, people start putting their money in stocks again. Uh, If not, we can easily see more flight. And that's what we saw. We saw the more flight because like, 
when you pre-price something like that, it's really important to continue or you end up just on a macro scale, you get this, what should, you know, what should have happened, you know, but didn't, right? Whenever something should happen and a January effect is something that should happen. Everyone should be able to rely on a January effect just as everyone should be able to rely on the market slowing in the summer, just as everyone should be able to rely on the market getting a little nutty around the holidays, right? Tax loss, all of these staples of the market are what people depend on the market to do. And whenever there's an upset, right? That, you know, people, you know, it's like when there's an upset in the gambling, all of a sudden, all of the quotes change, right? You know, all of a sudden, like if, you know, we go into the Super Bowl and, and it's Tom Brady versus, you know, and it's the Bucks versus, you know, whoever, you know, let's say who else is, it's the Bucks versus the Steelers, right? It's going to be all tilted towards the Bucks. And then all of a sudden Tom Brady breaks his hand. You're going to see, you know, you're going to see just mass chaos in, in, uh, in the spread. And that's, you know, that's kind of the idea is when something that should happen, doesn't, it creates this mass instant um, unrest. And I think today kind of is the culmination of that. We'll see, like, I personally think the market feels itchy for a reset. And what I mean a reset is, and, and I've talked about this before, and we still haven't got one. And, you know, it's, I'm not going to try to call when, because you're never going to guess when. You're never going to guess when until, like, the kind of the day before you kind of get a hint. And that's, you know, we're, you know, we kind of got a hint today. It might be today. We might get a big gap down, like a, like a, a, a gut check day tomorrow. And. And a gut check day would be like a gap down. Like, here's the thing. If we gap down, if we gap down and we were to gap down anywhere above 420, I, I think that gets bought up. If we gap down below 420, that's, then people, I think maybe 410, right? Or, or right around here, we're starting to get into danger zone. Like it should, I, I don't expect it to gap down this much. I really don't. I don't, I don't even know if it'll gap down at all, but this is like anything like kind of over here probably gets bought the fuck back up. 400 people would sell, sell everything. They fucking <laughs> people, there'd probably be a morning fucking panic sell off. And then maybe later in the day, huge rally up to 425 or something like that. That, I mean, I really think that like whatever, whatever, you know, if we do get a gap done, it'll be a gut check day. And what I mean by gut check is it's just a gut check. It's going to get bought back. I don't think that there's not, there's nothing macro enough to, to cause like a big, you know, harsh sell off, like, you know, like the coronavirus. Like, I mean, this sold, 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 right. There's nothing that macro that's going to really uh, do that. I don't think that's there. Yeah, the uh, this is the the two hundred right. This this is the two hundred line right here. And yeah, I mean, if it gaps down this high, people might sell. Actually, if, you know, if it just gaps down to four twenty or four forty, there might it might be a sell date. But if there's like a gut check day, I think it does get bought. But I think the market needs something like that. The market needs um needs a reason to to be bullish, like something like oh look we're at a great discount like there needs to be something there because right now people are not people aren't thrilled with the economic environment people are not thrilled with um this lack of january effect people aren't thrilled that we've been sideways um you know in the best years of the month right the best years of the month are the end of the you know the, the fourth quarter and the first quarter are um historically the best quarters out of um you know, out of the S&P 500. And that's because everybody spends more money around, you know, around at the end of the year and the beginning of the year, everyone spends the most money.